this thing on. All right. All right, guys. That sun looks horrible. <laughs> Let me move you over here. All right. Um. So, I am about to go get Fire Emblem. I'm ready. I'm excited. Let's let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, we're just gonna go on a little bit of a road trip. I'm gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna go pick it up. Let's do it. I'm so excited, bro. I'm just I'm ready. Let's do it. Start the car. All right, guys, we're here. So I'm about to go in. I'm gonna pick up the game and I'll be right back. Guys, I just got it. Um, let me show you sticker thing. I'm gonna take that off. I'm not so sure about all that, you know. Here it is, guys. Oh, oh man. I'm actually excited. Well, hello. It has been a while, guys. I'm sorry there's not been many uploads on the channel as of late. The new Fire Emblem came out. I don't know if you'll see that. We're going to do the same thing as before. Okay, I was hyping this game up quite a bit. I made a whole video on it, talking about my fondness for this series, and the game came out. I rushed, I went. I had to go 30 minutes to the closest Best Buy to me. I bring it home, I'm so excited. And I start playing, and the first, probably like 20 hours, is just peak Fire Emblem for me. It is just the most fun. Uh, I, I, I characters being thrown left and right at me constantly, and I was having a lot of fun. I played with like the photo mode, even which I never do that. Play with the photo mode, you know, like you have to dress up the characters, and the combat was great. Story was like it was meh, but it was I felt like it was going somewhere, and uh, it never really, never really did. So I should I should probably. I should probably say that this video is, this is my unscripted review of Fire Emblem Engage. I haven't put out a video, and I kind of want to, you know, talk about the game that's my favorite franchise, literally of all time. Uh, I felt like I was obligated. I had to do this. I had to talk about it, and I wanted to. I really do want to talk and tell you all about my thoughts on this game. Um, so, let's do that. Let's talk about it. Where to begin? <laughs> oh gosh. This is going to be fun. So I've never felt so split on a Fire Emblem game. Like so 50-50. Like half of it is great. Half of it's just okay. Um, the half that's great is the gameplay. They brought back the weapon triangle. And it has the whole like disarming, like the breaking mechanic where you can disarm an opponent or they can disarm you if they have a good matchup. That's essentially like super effective, if you will. And that part's great. Like the, it's, it's really fun. It's really interesting. The engage mechanic is also really interesting to kind of toy with and play with. And I like that in this game, the ability to get, um, abilities from a class is it's, it's different now where that ability is tied to the class so you can't do like you would do back in awakening where you kind of second seal and then you you level up to a point you gain an ability and then you go back to your class and you keep that ability as far as i know that's not really how it works instead this time if you raise your bond with an emblem ring then you can uh buy abilities from them, like from their their uh, ability pool. And that, that's actually pretty cool. I think that's a really cool mechanic way of doing it. And it kind of keeps you from having to constantly second seal and be working, you know, like it's a little more streamlined. And in that sense, I think building out your team is easier in this game, I would say. Um, but of course you can still second seal if you want, if you want to permanently leave a character in a different class. Um, which is what I did with Anna. I second sealed her to the high priest, um, or maybe high priestess. And the reason I did that is because that class has the highest uh, luck growth rate and her personal ability, which gives you uh, 500 gold every kill that she gets is based on luck. So I was making the dough. I was making the dough that way. So 
that part's great. And you're like, all right, so what's the problem? It's kind of the story, unfortunately. The story is unfortunately bad. And I hate that. I hate that I even said that about this game. Because look, going into it, I, I expected it to be more simple. I expected it to be a more simplistic Fire Emblem story. They're bringing it back, you know, Fell Dragon, Divine Dragon. You know, that's very stereotypical Fire Emblem stuff. And it just seemed like it was gonna be pretty basic, you know? But a basic story, take Shadow Dragon, the first game in the series. Even on the Famicom or the Switch port that Nintendo so lovingly took away from us in March of, I believe it was 2020, yes, 2020 or 2021, took it away. Even in that game or the better remake that exists, which I've also played, um, it's, it's as simple as it gets, right? I mean, it's felt, it's Dark Dragon and Blade of Light. Dark Dragon, get the sword, defeat the, defeat the dragon. But what makes that one better than Engage is at least that story had that interesting spin on it that made you still want to accomplish it. Even though characters were kind of basic, and in a sense, I'm the weird guy that actually kind of likes that about the first game, where you kind of imagine what these characters are rather than the game explicitly telling you. I'm not saying I want that for every game. I'm glad that is gone, but at least when you revisit the oldest games in the series, I kind of like it. I kind of like that I can, you know, I can get hyped up over Reese as an example, because he's just an old man. He's just a random old, you know, monk. And yet he's like one of my favorite characters because I just, you know, I, I, you kind of map your own character onto them. You you imagine what they're actually like. And I kind of like that. But anyways, back to the story. Marth's story, you want to see it finished because of Marth, because of the fact that the, I think it was Dolor, the Dolor Empire, pushes him out of his homeland and kills his family, minus his sister, I believe. But that is enough for me to be like, yeah, you know, that's a, you know, yeah, it's just, you know, Medeus, he's just an evil dragon. There's not a lot of depth to him in the first game, but you can kind of see how that spin on it makes it a little more interesting where you want to see Marth reclaim his homeland. That's, it's enough to get me to play it and, and enjoy the story and say that it's not, a bad story it's just kind of simple you know that's what i expected going into engage it's not that though like as much as i i've sat on this game man I've, i beat it it's probably been like four or five days ago now and i've i wanted to make this video but i i just sat down and i was like i just i i don't know like, i i just want to sit and think on it some more and after reflecting upon the main plot of the game, I I think it's I think it's 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 horrible. I think it's actually really bad because it doesn't have that spin like Marth's story did. There's not that. I mean, like yeah, you're a divine dragon, which is cool. It's cool that for the first time the main character is actually a dragon, uh, minus Corin, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Minus corn. I guess corn did exist, and we don't talk about we don't talk about corn. But like a divine dragon, you know, like he's he's like a he's like a tiki, you know. That's kind of cool. But that's like it. That's like as far as it goes. I mean, you know, they're, they're, you have like the the four main lord characters, and that's cool. Really cool, like how you you go and you get them, you know, and kind of recruit them from their kingdoms, and you get the retainers. You know, that's it's all right. But like. It doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't feel like you're working towards much. I mean, literally, the first first half of the game, you collect the emblem rings to defeat Sombron, the evil dragon. Um, and don't even get me started on on him, bro. He he's just he's just so bland. Like, yeah, you could say like, oh, you know, what about like I said, Medeus? You know, what about the other villains? You know, and again, I wouldn't care if he was kind of basic. You know, he's a basic villain character. But there's nothing stringing me along. You like barely even see the guy. You see him at the, the midway point when he takes all your rings, or actually technically Vale takes all your rings. And then at the end, when you fight him, and it's like, what what was his point? Like, and then he had his whole monologue at the end, talking about like the emblem of foundations or something. 
what is happening? Is that like DLC? Probably, probably will be, and I'm a sucker who bought it, but <laughs> I don't, I don't understand. I just, I don't think it has a strong enough grasp. And another thing I hate is the fact that what happened to, 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 to generals, to like unique boss fights. You remember back in Awakening when you, the, the mission where Emran, spoiler alert for Awakening, um, the mission right after Emran dies, and it has that awesome music. I mean, y'all probably have heard it before, but it has that awesome soundtrack. And the the general boss fight on that map, he was he had some depth to him. It wasn't much, but it was something cool. Where like he uh, the soldier came to him and was like, "Hey, I don't really want to fight them." And then he made the announcement. He was like, "Look, if any of y'all don't want to fight these guys, you're free to go." But he said, "Like I'm, I have to." And I was like. I like that, you know, not only is he a unique design for a character that they decide to make, but also they added a little, little bit of uniqueness to him. You know, if we were to ever, you know, recruit that guy, then surely he would be more fleshed out. But it just kind of was a reality of war that you don't always know the people that you're fighting against, but we had to for em or for, for our, our party. Cause we were going to, you know, be killed and destroyed unless we fought these people. And just add an extra layer of like, oh, you know, this guy's kind of interesting. You know, I kind of like him because he didn't want to kill your group. But then brings us to Fire Emblem Engage. And basically every single boss fight is the four hounds. And it's so boring. I got so sick of seeing their faces, dude. I kid you not. Like the only one I can think of off the top of my head that wasn't them as a boss fight um obviously any missions where there's just a random corrupted that's a boss fight whatever and then the ones where you'd fight like ivy like princess ivy or princess hortensia anyways the one that uh, i remember that was unique and uh, wasn't the hounds or wasn't you know corrupted or people you recruit is the one mission towards the end of the game where you're sailing and then you run into a a a, a some pirates and there's like a pirate captain and it was the lady and she had an axe she has like literally no dialogue <laughs> except for when you fight her and she was like I, I didn't even know she was the boss I, I had to look for her on the map and i found her i was like oh that's a unique design it's like what happened to that like what and like she's still so bland and basic but like come on <laughs> come on why why is half the maps in the game maybe more the same dumb boss fight with, with, um, uh, Zephia, that's her name. I, oh my gosh, don't even get me started on Zephia, bro. So many people would be like, so many people would be like, look, look at, look at the end of the game. Look at the end of the game when she like was laying there with, uh, Gris and they're talking. No, no, stop, stop that. We don't count that because here's my problem with this. Some of y'all might, you know, know this from playing the game. If not, I'll give you a little bit of background. The mission where you finally kill Gris and Zephia, she suddenly turns and gives you a way to def to break the second dragon shard, I believe is what it was. And this comes out of nowhere. There is no reason that she should have done this. And the best explanation was that she, she says to Gris, I'm at the end of my life and I want to do something good. I want to be good! <laughs> That's basically it. It's so detached and just dumb. It's, I was like, you're kidding me. I was so dumb. Like, that, at that point, I was like, the story ain't gonna, this is just not gonna be good. It's just not, you know, because throughout the entire game, I got like halfway through it and I was like, you know, it's simple, you know, but we're getting somewhere. I feel like it's gonna really get deep later. It really doesn't. It really doesn't. Zephyr's one of the dumbest characters ever. The hounds are annoying. Oh, and, and by the way, one of the things that would fix Zephyr is if throughout the entire game, she wasn't evil for the sake of it. And she was actually, she actually cared about the hounds and actually treated them like family, including Vale. If she had done that throughout the game and it was Sombron who was just mind controlling Vale, that would have worked, right? Because then, it, you know, even though Zephyr is bad, 
her attachment and her agency in the story is the fact that she cares for the hounds and she cares for Vale. That's her family. But throughout the entire game, she just mind controls Vale. She kills uh, Marnie and tries to kill Mavier. And then at the end, when she's dying, Vale's like, thank you for everything. Thanks for nothing. I'm like, what? What do you have to thank her for, bro? She's freaking messed up. I'm like, why Why would you do that? Oh my gosh. I did not understand that one bit at all. All right. So anyways, defeat Sombron, game over, whatever. It was cool seeing all the main characters. Any scene with all of them was really cool. It was really cool seeing all of them line up. The moment when Alir became an emblem, all that stuff. The fanboy in me came out. I'll say that. I'll say that's pretty good. So I should talk about the characters real quick. So the characters are good. They're decent. Okay. So what I I gotta I gotta go into this a little bit because I've seen a lot of people say they're horrible, they're dumb, stupid. I've seen a lot of people say just like ah oh, they're boring, you know, or like the first ones you get are bad, but then later they're okay. What I'm going to say about this is I personally like the cast. I think that they are decent to really good as far as I have seen. But here's something I need to remind people of uh, who only played three houses and are now like, what happened? Why are the characters so bad now? One thing you have to keep in mind is that every other Fire Emblem game the characters in those games are usually pretty simple from the outset. They're pretty basic, bland characters until you get to know them through the support logs. So, yeah, I know they're kind of tropey and kind of basic and kind of bland at first, but it's through that didn't really concern me too much until, you know, once we get into support logs, I'll find out because that's where you really find out the depth of a character. So the problem is a lot of people are going into this with three houses uh, at the forefront, which inherently is okay, but then they're thinking that that's every game in the series, when it's really never been that way. Now, three houses is my second favorite game of all time, very nearly my favorite game of all time, and I agree that it does have probably the best cast in the entire series, easily. And it's because the entire game revolves around them, the class you pick. <clears throat> Every other Fire Emblem game has such a big cast, and there is no multiple routes, so you kind of get all of them, and so they can't all have a part in the story. Which is unfortunate, but I do understand why it is that way. That's what I want to say to people who are initially like, dude, what happened? Like, the character quality just, like, plummeted. And yeah, it did drop because they're not as good as Three Houses, but there are some golden characters in there, some very good ones um, that are some of my favorites, but you have, to f you have to go deeper than that. You have to go deep into their support logs to find them. And one such example is, uh, surprisingly enough, Panette, the character of Panette in Engage. When I saw this design, I was like, what is this Fire Emblem Halloween skin? This looks like a Halloween skin from the mobile game on a different character. Like, what is this? <laughs> what is this design? I was like, she seems like, I was like, I ain't gonna care about it. She's just bland, just this. I don't care. Didn't use her for a while until, until later, I ended up getting some supports with her. Found out that she's siblings with Pandrea, who turns out to be one of my favorite characters as well from the game. I really like Pandrea. And I find out that Panette's backstory, so I find out something about it, and I find out that she <clears throat> she grew up in a, in a family, uh, and her dad was an alcoholic, and her mom was was partying all the time. She was always partying, and that really re like I don't know why that really resonated with me, and. Maybe I haven't gotten enough support logs or maybe I missed the detail, but I'm pretty sure they were even tied to <clears throat> a church in the game. Like they were a part of one or even led it. I'm not really sure about that. But regardless, she has a bad taste in her mouth of churches because of 
her experience with her parents and you know that kind of thing and I was like man that was just so fascinating and and how she ran from home and then she was kind of rough you know had a rough childhood and that kind of made her who she is and and uh, she eventually met Princess Tamara, became a retainer, and then she tried to, she grew. And that was what was so cool about her character to me because she grew from it. She was a character who struggled with these things. Her parents were not there for her. She was basically on her own and she ran from home. And yet she rose above it. She rises above. And yeah, there's that piece of her that's always gonna be kind of wild She's going to be that wild girl that ran away from home and didn't have barely a childhood. But at the same time, you've seen how she's grown past that, how she's pushed beyond it. And one of my favorite support logs with her is the Aaliyah support where they talk about the parents and the fact that she's open to going and finding them and trying to make amends. Um, that's awesome. But also the Pandreo supports with her. I got all those and I found out that at the end of that, she kind of warms up to going to church. She was there praying with Pandreo. And I'm like, man, like, that's cool. Like, that's enough of a character for me to be like, that's a really cool character. And I very much enjoyed learning about her throughout the story. So I don't have enough time to go over all the characters that I thought were amazing <laughs> to, or just for me, I thought were really good. Um, but she, Panette is probably the best example of a character where I was just like, I don't care. I don't care about this character. And then she became one of my favorites in the game. That's why, while they don't make the strongest first impression and a lot of the early game characters are just whatever, there are a lot of characters in this game and you're bound to find one or two or a handful that you end up liking a lot. And that's what happened with me. I ended up finding the characters that I really resonated with, that I really enjoyed using, and I enjoyed their story, but you have to go deeper with it. And so I personally, while I will admit, not the strongest cast in the series, nor is it nearly as strong as Three Houses characters, I will say, that they are good overall there's a lot to enjoy about them and i'm sure that if any of you watching this will play the game that you'll find plenty of characters that you enjoy and that you would want to use and learn more about but don't discount them off the bat before you've got you've taken the time to get to know them learn about the ones that catch your interest and find out their backstory find out things about them not every support log is, is going to tell you the most about the character. Some of them are more lighthearted, but there's stuff in there for you to look at. And I think it's worth doing. <sighs> so anyways, I think this, I think I've said everything I, I want to say off the top of my head about this game. But with all that being said, thank you all for watching. I'll catch you on the next video. Don't forget to engage that subscribe button and I'll see y'all later. God bless. Oh, 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 oh,